My name is Isla Farnood, and today I'm going to be talking about how I built a voting dApp on my computer. If you don't know what a dApp is, it's basically a decentralized application, which means that you can post things or complete a transaction without there being a third party involved. They're generally built on the Ethereum blockchain using smart contracts and can be anything, ranging from a game which allows you to collect animals to a full-blown social media. If you don't know what any of that meant, feel free to check out my article, um, which I'll be linking in the description box down below, which, where I outline what a blockchain is, how it works, and go a little bit into Ethereum. Without further ado, let's look at the website of the voting dApp and how that would work and how you would vote using it. So this is the website in all of its glory. And as you can see, um, I've already voted for a candidate right now, which I did for a test run. So um, right now I'm using an account which has actually not voted before. Um, the accounts are taken from MetaMask and those are imported from Ganache. Uh, as you can see, there's a drop-down menu which allows you to um, select which candidate you want to vote for. So say I wanted to vote for candidate 2, I would click that. And then I would go over, press vote, which is going to trigger a pop-up from MetaMask. And basically here what they're saying is they're asking to confirm that you actually want to vote for that person. Um, by voting, you're actually going to be uh, deducted a small gas fee from your gas. I'm going to go over and press confirm. And now, as you can see, candidate 2 now has two votes. Um, and I got a notification which confirmed my transaction. Uh, actually, one of the best parts of this uh, code is that it doesn't allow you to vote again. So the pop-up form is actually gone. So since it recognizes that your account has already voted in the past, um, it will actually just close the form, so you can't vote again. And this eliminates the chances of you double voting or rigging an election. Almost all of the coding I've done for this project was completed in the Sublime Text application. So I'm just going to go over the code for a few of the important parts of this project. So. I'm going to start by looking over the actual contract which runs our program. So at the beginning we have a struct for the candidate, it stores the accounts that are voted, it fetches, um, it allows us to fetch candidates. We have a candidate's count, we have an event for when you vote, a um, function which allows you to add candidates, and a function which allows you to vote. So this vote function is actually really important since it has the parameters which prevents double voting from occurring as well as voting for a the wrong candidate. Um, so you can see this piece of code right here. Generally uh, the contract isn't too complicated and is relatively easy to understand. Um, I'm not going to go over it in too much depth since I've generally described what each part of this code does in the comments. Moving on, we're going to take a look at the index.html file. So this is what's being run when you set up the website. Um, so here we have the header as well as a loader. So this loader is going to appear if you either don't have MetaMask running on your browser or if you are just, um, if the website is unable to receive the contract data or your account data. So um, we have the table which displays the number of votes each candidates have and the candidates which are running, and here we have the form which allows you to actually vote and submit your vote for your account. This website is run from the back by the JavaScript we have, so there's a lot of stuff happening here and some of it is simply like set up in order for other stuff to work. Um, but the most important part of this is actually the render function, so this is what allows you to actually um, 
load the website. So this is everything that's occurring. So we start by hiding the content so that we can allow stuff to load. Um, here it loads the account data, it loads the contract data, and then it has a if statement which makes sure that if you um, have already voted, the form is going to be hidden from you. So that way you're not allowed to vote again. Um, after that, we see that it's finally ready to show the content. So um, yeah, it also has a function which allows you to cast a vote. So this is what we saw in the um, with the vote button and the drop down menu. So there you have it. That's how my voting DAP works. If you're interested in a full breakdown of the code or are interested in how blockchain could impact voting in the future, keep an eye out for an article which I'll be writing soon. This is only the first step in my exploration of the blockchain technology. So if you're interested in what I'm going to be building in the future, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on LinkedIn or Medium, or check me out on my personal website at ilofarnoon.com. Thanks for watching.